so hello everyone today is maze ace this is actually a makeup video because i have planned for this project since the very beginning of this year and it's just because my new semester has begun and i really didn't have time for editing this video but for now because of the coronavirus coronavirus quarantine and uh, uh, my semester is end so I really got some, I finally got some free time for this. Uh, it's generally about a project I did in the winter time, which is a uh, old technique called cyanotype blueprint. Um, yeah, I actually do some novel things on this technique and uh, create some kind of my own my own cyanotype blueprint. So I think it would be very interesting. Also, because I do it in my hometown when I come back to China, um, I also attach some photos about the food, my family, and uh, how my hometown looks like. Uh, I think it would be a very fantastic combination. So anyway, please enjoy. Cyanotype is a photographic printing process that produces a sign blueprint. Engineers use the process in the 20th century as a simple and low-cost process to produce copies of joints. The process uses a reaction between ferrous iron and potassium ferric cyanide to form turban blue on paper. However, in cyanotype blueprint process, we don't use ferrous iron directly. Instead, we use a photosensitive ferric compound which can decompose and give ion to source when exposed to the light. Also, just mention, some sources may cause a dark blue compound as a Persian blue. Turban blue and Persian blue may vary in color because they start from different regions and have different impurities, but they are actually the same compound in terms of chemistry. The right hand side is the structure of this compound. Okay, now let's come back to the project. In the past years, a lot of recipes for cyanotype was developed, but the most common one used potassium ferric cyanide and a photosensitive compound called ferric ammonia citrate. However, I myself really don't have ferric ammonia citrate in my lab. I was pity at the beginning and think I can't make this without it. But I quickly remembered that I once developed a sensitive process for a chelate called potassium ferric oxalate, and it should have some similar property as ferric ammonia citrate based on my chemistry knowledge. So a brand new idea came to my mind. Maybe I could make potassium ferric oxalate myself and use that as an alternative to make my own cyanotype process. To support my, my idea, I do some research on the internet and found a very good article. This article used exactly the same thing as I thought and it gave a very detailed instruction. So based on this article, let's start. The first part of the experiment is the synthesis of the chelate potassium ferric oxalate. The chelate itself is a bit complicated in terms of structure, but the synthesis is very straightforward. To get started, we need a ferric trichloride, potassium oxalate, and oxalic acid. The general idea is simply mix up ferric trichloride and the potassium oxalate together to let them react. Firstly, measure 3 grams of potassium oxalate monohydrate and 16 grams of ferric trichloride. In my experiment, I make a mistake that I've got to count the water component in the ferric trichloride and therefore I double the dosage of potassium oxalate. This mistake could affect the finer yield because I need to do several more recrystallization to purify the final product, but fortunately it doesn't destroy the reaction. The second step is to make the solution. I use 50 ml and 100 ml of water respectively to dissolve ferric trichloride and the potassium oxalate. Since I don't have the magnetic stir, I just use a glass roll to stir and turn on my oven to accelerate the dissolution. 
As you can see, the ferric trichloride solution is extremely cloudy, and that's because ferric ion experiences seriously hydrolysis and become ferric hydroxide. It seems makes the solution looks pretty bad, but it is actually fine when react with the oxalate. Okay, now here we come to the final step of the reaction. I transfer the potassium oxalate solution to another big beaker and slowly drain the in ferric trichloride solution with a glass rod. As you can see, the interface of the two solutions immediately turn light green. This shows the reaction happen and this green is the color of the chelate ion, ferric trioxalate and anion, and this is exactly what I want. In this reaction, ferric ion hybrids is 4s4p and 4d orbitals to form a sp3d2 hybridization. Oxalate ions lone pair would occupy these three orbitals to form the chelate. This is called an outer orbital chelate. At the end, I add a few amount of oxalic acid to adjust the pH. To be professional, I really need to make oxalic acid solution and monitor the pH, but I myself just end up adding oxalic acid solid until the solution get clear. When the reaction is done, I quickly filter the solution and leave it in a recrystallization dish for one day recrystallization. Here I touch a time lapse record to show the whole process. After one day recrystallization, we can see some green crystal accompanied with some sharp clear things precipitate out. This is the exceed potassium oxalate crystal, which I miscalculate at the beginning. To make the sample pure, I need to do several more recrystallization wrong, and now I can only manually separate these two kinds of crystals. At the end, I got 20 grams of potassium ferric trioxalate. This indicates a yield of 74%. This yield is a bit low in terms of inorganic reaction. This is because I do too much recrystallization. This chelate has a relative high solubility in aqueous solution. In each round, I lose a considerable amount of product. Okay, so now the first part is done. Before we jump to the next section, let's give some detail about my winter break. So in my memory, I'm always searching for food everywhere. Yeah, my friends would know that a kind of I'm a kind of foodaholic. Uh, the food is my favorite things. And also I come back to my real hometown because I was born in another province of China, which is not I lived. Um, so I go with my parents to my real hometown to see my grandparents. Yeah, <laughs> that's also another thing. Here I give a snapshot of my winter break here, so enjoy! Now let's go to the real cyanotype part. Firstly, I quickly make a 0.3 more per liter potassium fork oxalate and the potassium fork cyanide solution respectively. Then I mix equal amount of both solutions as a cyanotype solution. I splash the cyanotype solution on a piece of paper sheet by a syringe and use a brush to spread the solution as evenly as possible. Then I use a hard dryer to quickly dry it. For now, all the materials are ready, and we will make the blueprint on this paper sheet. I choose a photo which I took two years ago at Toronto as an example. I convert it to black and white and then do inverse on it. In this way, I made a negative of this photo so that it can be projected on the paper. Then I put the negative on my sand type paper sheet and stick it on the window 
to let the photo expose. In this process, a series of complicated free radical reaction is happening. But to be simplified, let's explain in this way. Under the activation of photo, an uh, intramolecular redox reaction happens in this oxalate chelate. The carbon in the oxalate ion is oxidized to carbon dioxide and gives its electron to the ion 3. Ion 3 is reduced to ion 2 by accepting oxalate's electron. The reaction is the key point of cyanotype type reaction because it offers ion 2 source for temple blue. Then, the free ion 2 particle made the potassium fluoric cyanide and settle down as turban blue on the surface of paper. Since this reaction is activated by the light, only the area which is not covered by the negative will react. This is how this technology can form imagine. I left the photo under the sunshine for one minute exposure and this is what I got. I would say it is just okay. <laughs> The resolution is not that good, but anyway, the imaging is there. I'm not sure what caused the terrible resolution. Maybe the quality of paper. Maybe there are some bars on the concentration of solution. Maybe the negative is not well disposed. But in terms of chemistry, this project gets the job done. I still have a lot of solution, so I make some other negatives and conduct the cyanotype on them. I would just attach the final result here. At this moment, the project is almost done. There is actually some further process, but when I made the photo, my vacation is almost over, and I really don't have time for the further process. This is really a pity, but anyway, I could only end it in this step. In summary, during the winter break, I do the synthesis of potassium fluoric trioxalate and use the chemicals to create my own cyanotype blueprint. The final product isn't as beautiful as I expect, but at least I made this. The most part is the chemistry and in this point it is good enough. Besides, the most interesting part for myself is the experiment, i.e. do it myself. Now I finish all the job and post this video. Hope everyone could enjoy.